If you're being asked to do things that make you feel weak and ashamed, then stop. Don't do them. You're becoming an agent of your own downfall. You should be preparing to find another job and, if possible, a better one. You have a choice between tyranny or famine, but you get to choose which one you'll endure. You don't want to be stuck in a place that's suffocating or without challenge. You might even consider quitting your job if there's no challenge, thinking, this job offers security. But you find yourself saying, I can't bear this. It's eating away at my soul. It's all security and no challenge. So why do you crave a challenge? Because that's what you're built for. You're designed to handle a maximal load because that's what strengthens you. And you need to be strong because life is incredibly tough. The evil forces in the world are constantly undermining the structure of society. And you have to be vigilant and sharp to prevent that from happening so that you don't become corrupt and so that your family and state don't fall into corruption. You need to be alert, sharp, and ready to speak. You have to be educated, know your history, know how to think, read, and speak, know how to set goals, and be willing to shoulder the burdens of the world. If you observe yourself and notice that you had a particularly good day at work, what does that mean? It means you lost track of time. When you're not having a good day, Every minute drags by. That's what school was like for me. I remember visiting my daughter's school 21 years ago, sitting through a class that lasted an hour. The teacher had all the kids on the floor, having some read to the others. Some of those kids couldn't read at all. And I felt like I was seven years old again, watching the clock tick by. I thought, if I were stuck in this classroom for three days, I'd misbehave even at 40 years old, just like I did when I was six. That's no place to be. If you're in a workplace where pathological things are happening, it's easy to know. I can tell you how to tell if things are going wrong at work or within yourself, but you can fix it. If you're being asked to do things that make you weak and ashamed, stop. Don't do them. One thing I learned is that systems spiral out of control when people don't stop them when they're just starting to go awry. You might think, I should just keep my head down and stay quiet, and maybe that's not bad advice. You don't want to make unnecessary enemies or attract more trouble than you need. But you've got to ask yourself day by day if you're not selling your soul. There's so much nonsense in the mid-level bureaucratic world where all the tyranny seems to be concentrated. The reason it spreads is that sensible people stay silent when they should speak up. What's odd is that there are far more sensible people than those who aren't, but they're just not as loud. If something's really bothering you at work, you have to prepare to find another job. That's the first step. I don't mean you should definitely find another job, but you should prepare to find one, ideally a better one. You have a choice between tyranny or famine, but you get to pick which one you'll face. And if you're being oppressed soul-crushingly so by what you're forced to swallow at work, don't think there isn't a cost to that. You'll lose your self-respect, and rightfully so. But even worse, you're becoming an agent of your own destruction, destroying your own ideals and letting the weak and corrupt win. If you stood up properly, but you'd need to have yourself in order to do this, at least to some extent, you could scare them back into their corners, and that would be a good thing. The alternative is worse, a slow psychological decline. I've seen it in many people who've been tyrannized at work to the detriment of their mental and physical health, sometimes to the point of collapse. They faced absurd challenges when they were sensible people, and it cost them dearly. If this nonsense isn't dealt with locally, while it's still relatively minor, it will multiply until it has to be addressed at the societal level. We're already seeing signs of that. Antifa is one example. Problems that aren't solved only grow, and eventually, people start fighting. It's better to argue than to fight unless you really want to fight. And while I can understand the urge to fight, I wouldn't recommend it because it doesn't lead to good outcomes. You might have a duty. That's why you stand up and say what you need to say. You don't even have to be making a point. You're just trying to get something done. This is how it looks to me. If you can't tell someone to go to hell, then you can't negotiate with them. And if they've got you in a bind, 
then you can't say anything. So you have to position yourself so you've got some mobility. That's a good principle in life. In general, you should always have a lateral move available. Then, ask yourself if there are things at work that are disturbing your soul. Start by assuming I'm probably weak, deceitful, useless, and lazy. Then talk to some people, your spouse, friends, or co-workers, and find out if you're really as flawed as you think or if there's something wrong at work. If you rule out your own pathology as the cause of your dissatisfaction, then maybe something's rotten in the state of Denmark, and maybe you should speak up before the whole thing collapses because it can happen faster than you'd think. You might find that speaking up is an adventure, but you have to do it carefully and be prepared. It might turn out to be the best thing that ever happened to you. If you're careful and strategic, this is a battle, not something to wander into thoughtlessly. You may find that others feel the same way. And you're not just some psychopathic mouthpiece, but a canary in a coal mine. So ask yourself, when you do what you do, is it making you stronger or weaker? If it's making you weaker, do you really want that? The weaker you get, the more you'll be tyrannized, and worse, the more bitter you'll become. Then you'll start contributing to terrible things, snapping at your spouse, mistreating your kids. It's no joke to be tyrannized at work. I'd say you have an ethical responsibility as a citizen to confront creeping tyranny head on, wherever it occurs. It's not obvious that some jobs are beneath people. Imagine you're a checkout person at a grocery store, a fairly unskilled job, you could be a miserable, resentful person doing that job, coming in every day exuding bitterness, making mistakes, and ensuring every customer has a slightly worse day than necessary. You could waste time, maybe even steal things, resent the people who gave you the position because they're above you in the hierarchy, and gossip about your co-workers. You can turn that menial position, which you might consider beneath you, into your own little slice of hell but you also have the power to transform that position into something meaningful, to approach it with dignity and integrity, and to refuse to let it drag you down. You can choose to make the best of even the most humble role, to use it as a stepping stone to something greater, or at the very least, as a means of maintaining your self-respect. Remember, no matter where you find yourself, you have a responsibility to yourself and to those around you to stand up for what's right, to challenge the forces that seek to diminish you, and to continue striving towards something better. That's how you ensure that your work, your life, and your choices all align with the person you truly want to be.